submit and what is there so now Very good morning to all of you. We are doing Elizabethan literature, Elizabethan drama, Elizabethan drama, <coughs> not exactly Elizabethan drama. We have covered uh, Renaissance drama. And uh, when we say Renaissance drama, that means Elizabethan drama and Jacobian drama. Elizabethan drama is a period when Queen Elizabeth was ruling and Jacobin drama is a drama uh, period of drama when King James first was ruling. OK, and there is change of dynasty from Tudors. It comes to Stuarts, right? And uh, since Elizabeth did not marry, she did not have a, a lineage. So yeah. here, uh, yes. So the king from Scotland took charge of England too. Right. So James I was from uh, Scotland. Okay. And uh, he ruled from around 1600 to uh, uh, 1625. Okay. So uh, during this rule, that last five years is also called as Puritan age. He ruled till 1625, right? But uh, people, uh, literary people, they also say that from 1620, Puritan age began. This I will tell you later how. Okay, so first thing to understand is James 1 is uh, the period when James 1 reigned that is known as Jacobian age. Why? Because James 1 was his English name. Okay, his name was Jacobus. Jacobus is a Latin word. Okay, so from Jacobus, he, uh, Jacobian age, and in, in English name is James Swan. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now this is James Swan was also called as wisest fool of England. Right? So there are certain reasons this I'll tell you. He made so many changes in England basically. Okay. So now during this Jacobian age, literature uh, uh, was given importance and some dark plays like uh, Macbeth is a dark play where the person, uh, one person is killing other person to become a ruler. And uh, uh, then the tempest is there and King Lear. So just one thing you should remember that Elizabethan age was the age when colonization had started. Imperialism has be begun. People from England, they are traveling far and wide and establishing their companies for business and after um, uh, beginning as a trader, they are trying to settle down there and they are making these colonies as uh, these places as their colonies, right? So national pride was at its peak during Elizabethan age. And so this continues in Jacobian age also. That expansion. Shakespeare, though he wrote so many famous plays during Jacobian age, but we still call Shakespeare as a Renaissance dramatist because so many work he had done, he had begun in Elizabethan age. And after death of uh, Shakespeare, Ben Jonson becomes the most famous dramatist, most famous literary figure of Jacobian age. Right. He wrote every man in his humor. 
he wrote i to, i have told you about that then he wrote volpone and he wrote some uh, many plays alchemist there are many plays right so this is something that you should know ab uh, about jacobian age now i think we have covered enough for your ba second year level renaissance literature now in the same unit you also have 20th 20th century literature okay so now we are ma'am yes ma'am shobhna hair i have a question yes yes sure ma'am so the the renaissance age includes uh, elizabethan age plus jacobean age hai na plus it includes Jacobian both age. of them yes and after renaissance it is uh, called puritan age that continues for some time because you know uh, uh, in renaissance they had broken all the boundaries right okay. they had huh. broken social all boundaries, boundaries. Uh, yes all kind of boundaries all kind by all kind of boundaries i mean they were strict christians right hmm. then they get influenced by classical literature then they mm. uh, they have over confidence and they are talking about expansion and all that so in paintings and in um, uh, sculpture and in literature what they are showing is regarded by high brow people as a, um, as vulgarism okay to that extent they goes by vulgarity i mean that on stage they are showing murders mm. they are showing bloodshed these are shocking things right then uh, uh, too much of uh, you know uh, sexual uh, descriptions are there in literary works right ma'am is caroline age also included in renaissance uh, in, when uh, kings uh, charles the first was ruling yes almost yes so this change is uh, actually this division of uh, elizabethan jacobian caroline these things they are coming with the uh, they are named after the rulers okay so renessa is at decline during caroline age okay ma'am like like in jacobian it had gone too much it had exceeded okay so हेलो नमस्ते मैं मैं ऑनलाइन क्लास ले रही हूं। मैं आपको कॉल करूं थोड़ी देर में थैंक यू तो व्हाट आई वाज सेइंग दैट इट वाज इन डिक्लाइन शेक्सपियर रोड ड्यूरिंग flowering of renaissance and then during jacobian age also that means renaissance as a movement continues uh, from elizabethan age to jacobian age and it is on decline during caroline age and then uh, in place of renaissance we say age of puritanism puritan means strictly they talk about what is there in religion and there should be no vulgarity so in this case in this way you know some strict rules come some hypocrisy also comes you know uh, renaissance people they prided themselves about reawakening their knowledge these things right but then during jacobian age there was for example i'm giving you example difference between shakespeare and john webster john webster was uh, uh, came later during renaissance he wrote a play duchess of malfi now here the portrayal of, of women was very different from what uh, shakespeare used to show and then uh, he showing uh, all uh, you know kinds of scenes on the stage now puritans they were uh, the ones who considered you know you meet some kind of people uh, even uh, nowadays you know the human nature is of so many kinds so a kind of movement came who said that these things should be banned on the stage this is vulgar this is obscenity so that is puritan age so yes caroline age is included in renaissance but renessa was at its decline during caroline age okay ma'am 
okay so this happens till 1660 now this is what you have studied you have done uh, now what you have covered is literature beginning from i discussed middle age for giving you introduction of renessa then from 1625 i said almost renessa comes in england it comes 100 years later then italy it began in italy then we covered a renessa of england and we went up to 1660 now we have to jump to 20th century literature okay so what we are uh, leaving which is not in your syllabus is a uh, victorian age okay romantic age these things all we are leaving and we are coming to we make a leap to present and that is modern literature or 20th century literature modern literature has also passed today we say it's post modern literature right so coming to yeah. modern yes modern literature that means 1900s that is modern literature so coming to modern literature uh, to our 20th century drama we first see what was 20th century like so today we will dis uh, discuss the atmosphere the society the changes that came in 20th century okay and this 20th century comes up after victorian age okay so i hope you are able to see the slide now yes ma'am we can see yes, yes ma'am okay so now what are the characteristics of modern age modern period modern literature first you know one two three wise you can just see these uh, characteristics only characteristics we are going to discuss today 20th 20th century this is regarded as 1900s rapid urbanization process first thing that we have to remember agrarian society we talked about in middle age it still went through in renaissance but uh, yes industrialization and these all things they the trading uh, was beginning now here it is uh, uh, at its glory in everything is mechanized machines are there it's a age of machine right typewriters have come and all kinds of machines have come so this is 21st century in place of stage stage and theater people are still going to theater but then movie theaters moving films have begin so it is the age of rapid urbanization that means cities are developing and very rapidly right then people migrating into the big cities moving away from agrarian based economy towards more urban technology based economy because when urbanization begins then buildings have to be built up for people to live right and uh, then they go to offices white collar jobs come into existence industries and factories come into existence agricultural products they have to be moved to uh, cities for distribution right so what is happening basically agriculture is decreasing and mechanization is increasing then science during this time emerges as the most significant discipline renaissance age i also told you about copernicus and uh, uh, those discoveries so that was the age of wonder now no more people wonder at science science is the thing that they know that through science they can uh, make their lives better so they take science as a subject as a discipline that is the difference between attitude of people in renaissance age and now here in 20th century 
they know that's what is science okay so these science people they are not like uh, uh, magicians they make miracles happen so some of the important discoveries of 20th century is discovery of dna you know, because this is the period when i'll later on tell how dna also affects how they come to know so there are different phases there it is genes that are affecting our lives our physical body our race right then comes radio waves radio waves they make a just drastic change in the lives of people radio waves are used in entertainment it is used for detective purposes it is used in wars it is used at so many places then einstein comes during this age and gives you theory of relativity that is everything is relative here okay his theory of relativity comes in science and this theory of relativity changes all the uh, so many discoveries scientific discoveries it is it challenges those discoveries then steam engine comes that makes transport easy okay people can now easily move from one place to another till now uh, 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 railways were, were not in existence right so this is the change that comes now who has uh, someone has clicked there don't do this please this has disturbed the slides i am giving you all the recording so please don't do this then theory of relativity and steam engine right is it clear till here yes yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am so all these changes they have made revolutionary changes in the way people live okay now people the entire human kind they think in radical way radical means drastic changes are coming you know when darwin came and he gave his theory charles darwin theory of natural selection and uh, uh, then uh, it was a uh, uh, struggle for existence and survival of fittest okay such theories came they immediately challenged god okay if science is doing everything then what is god doing such kind of radical thinking is, is coming into existence now right now at one place we feel that so much of advancement so much of development is taking place that means people should be very happy in 20th century but then just you remember that during uh, in the whole world this was the period when uh, major economic recession took place the world went into economic depression there were so many internal wars that were going within the country between two countries and finally it was world war world war 1 then world war 2 both in 20 20th century took place right so when war take place Uh, till now what was the attitude of people especially till renaissance age it was like, like uh, uh, war means national pride you if you win the war if you lose the war then you have to take the revenge right it was uh, uh, taken as a, a matter of uh, national pride integrity and all that patriotism but here this concept breaks right after going through these two uh, world wars after first and then second also just remember science is playing major role in these world wars so uh, uh, when these different nations are fighting then there is a realization that man can create 
till now this was happening but now there is a realization that man can destroy it okay they were talking about humanism they were talking about how to make planet better uh, for living uh, but then here what uh, when war greed comes power hunger comes then man realizes that man is not just a god man can be devil also you can destroy everything with this painful realization for most thinkers literary thinkers writers philosophers artists they reflect the in an artistic way this pain of mankind so you know uh, till victorian age literature was very uh, simple you may say and uh, it went in one way renaissance movement it has one impact but when you come to 20th century literature it is in layers it is multi dimensional there are so many aspects of same thing so basically literature becomes very complicated it's a complex thing there are so many movements of different kinds coming from different directions and a transportation has taken place so people from different nations even far off nations they are coming into uh, they are interacting they are coming to contact with each other they are affecting so culture culture is also changing when in renaissance we talk about it is just uh, english culture getting influenced by italy france germany european countries right but then as they are making colonies their culture does not impact much because they think that these colonies they are just lower beings they are barbarians they are uncivilized people and we have come to teach them with this attitude but with these wars slowly gradually it becomes like each country revolts and they try, again again someone has don't do this see now the slide has gone someone created this disturbance and slides have gone so this disturbs class a lot why are you doing this don't be dist uh, destructive this is what we i was just saying in 20th century man becomes aware of this that you can even go on a destructive path don't do this okay so now we are here so the presence of war and conflicts and violence throughout is seen in this 20th century and the effect of world wars fought between different nations was about the realization that man was perfectly capable of destroying what he had built and this gave painful realization for most thinkers and writers and artists of those time this gets reflected in modern literature right there was realization that cruelty is the integral feature of human psychology i told you that science and technology was developing along with science and technology literature reflects all these things that which are, which are taking place here political affairs were changing political scenario was changing uh, more than half of the world had become colony of british empire it was an uh, that imperialism was flourishing uh, and uh, the world was divided into haves and have nots right and at the same time what what was happening who is anand singh tomar do you know no ma'am no ha you have anand singh tomar you have joined the class who is anand singh tomar i will have to remove other uh, if you don't tell the name I think some girl has joined with this name Anand Singh Tomar. Who is it? Okay, you have left.
Okay. So, this realization, uh, what I was saying about uh, that, uh, yes, then the, in the field of psychology also, there were so many developments. Many psychologists came during this age. One most important name was Simon Freud, right? So these psychologists, they gave theory, they uh, they analyzed human mind and then they say, I said that cruelty is also a part of human. So, you know, till now what they were doing was just that they were trying to say that human beings are full of mercy and they are, they should be they, the Puritan age. You, if you see that how man should teaching moral and everything. So cruelty is the integral part. This is what uh, psychologists at that time, they came and uh, they said, this highlighted the fragile nature of human existence. So many wars taking place all, all around. So people were trying to conquer each other through commerce, through trade, Spain, uh, had so many colonies at that time. France was having colonies, uh, you know, then uh, 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 so many European countries, they had conquered the neighboring countries. So there were various forms of colonization. They were coming either for trade and then colonizing or politically they were colonizing or both ways they were col colonizing. So there is also a subtle realization that human existence, despite of all these powerful strikes, they have made human existence is very fragile. All the powerful strikes that they have made means so much scientific developments have taken place. That means life should be very good. But at the same time, atom bomb is also made. And one atom bomb and the entire country is destroyed. So fragile is human life. So towards the end, what the wars left behind was not just a sense of success or a sense of national satisfaction, but also sense of discovery of hopelessness of courage in the face of war. That means that during war, these world war, every member, uh, every family had sent one or more members to, uh, to the war. Some had returned from the war. Some did not return, they died. Some came crippled. So women in the houses, they were left widowed. They were left fatherless, brotherless. So all these things were taking place. So this affected psyche of uh, 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 human beings. So whether war was won or what, whether war was defeated, they didn't feel any kind of national pride or national satisfaction. They saw human life to be very fragile. That one war could kill the entire country. So science is not just discovery of DNA. Science is not just development and making our life easy and comfortable, but destruction also comes. Destruction. Because, yes, but science is not responsible for that. Psychology says that cruelty that is in the part of the nature of human beings, that can go to any extent. And these national boundaries, you know, feeling of patriotism, these all things are now pushing it. Because when families are destroyed, when society is destroyed, when uh, all the natural resources are destroyed in war, and then the life uh, becomes poor, quality of life becomes so poor after all the destructions that have taken place, after a war, then people cannot have the feeling of joy. Their minds are affected psychologically. Right? The, uh, even the soldiers who have written here uh, and in a healthy way from war, they have seen their brothers dying in war. They themselves have gone through in so many struggles. So they are basically disillusioned. They feel that this national victory is just an illusion. A Brahman. What, what if we have won today? See how many things we have lost. We have got little 
at what cost so this kind of disillusionment is present in modern age ma'am yes ma'am what do they mean by the discover sense of discovery of hopelessness of courage in the face of war the, this whole line what does it the mean the last slide okay. yes ma'am the last line and the ma last line there is a sense of discovery of hopelessness what they have discovered that this courage is a hopeless thing after war on the in the face of war they have discovered that courage is hopeless thing just having courage does not help you win the war right thank you ma'am machines have come into existence see let us compare uh this will line will become uh, very clear if uh, you understand that after modern age comes post uh, modern age right and post modern age from post modern age with this development of technology and this all cyber thing we have even moved to post human age right now many countries advanced countries what they are planning that in place of sending the soldiers to fight war you know through artificial intelligence also without pilot the plane can be flown fighter plane can be flown in the sky flown. and then the, uh, this uh, uh, fighter plane has artificial intelligence and with this uh, in a remote way they can uh, uh, they can drop bombs to other countries and drones are there drones are there so hopelessness of courage is it courageous thing that you are setting and with remote you are controlling the bombs uh, which are being dropped to other countries and killing public of other country so no, hopeless yes this hopelessness of courage the courage has nothing to do in the face of war it is a hopeless thing so this i gave you example from post modern even what they are with me Yeah, in a way, it means that wars are more about power and less about yes. courage and the thing. Yes, 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 yeah. exactly. War is a political thing, right? It has got nothing to do with courage. This is what modern literature in modern literature and after fighting these two world wars, countries found. Okay, ma'am. These days, they are even. Have you seen uh, movies like Terminator, X Men, and all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, right. Uh, there, uh, I'll tell you. There, they are building up humanoids. That means that yes. has flesh of human, and mm. then inside they are machines. Machines. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So now, even there is a talk that some first world countries they are having these things for a king of uh, Arab. He really has uh, a protect as a bodyguard. Uh, um, uh, a machine which has uh, um, artificial skin, just like real skin, right? They uh, they they have artificial uh, intelligence. They can talk also. So they are making such kind of soldiers to fight in war. They say in this way, human beings will not be killed in our country. No family will be destroyed. But what happens to the other country you are attacking? less privileged ones who are not so technologically advanced yes ma'am right so that is hopelessness of courage in the face of war okay ma'am got it right yeah so now in early times the various wars that england had fought with france acha england aur france ke beech mein hamesha ladai rahi hai okay and charles one escaped with uh, i told you uh, charles second he had escaped to the france during renaissance age right and then with french friends he had come to when he came that is restoration age we are not discussing that also here and uh, he had come here then again he brought a uh, broad french influence but then these relations they were very complicated so in early time there there were various wars that england had fought with france and with spain and always brought at the end of the war a sense of national accomplishment as a result 
right? National consciousness was getting cemented in early times. After every success of the war, there was pride. That, that was the time. But in 20th century, the result of war was not about success or of happiness, but was an inherent sense of loss that one had to face, irrespective of whether one was in the winning side or in the losing side. Right? Now, with this, keeping in tune with this hopelessness of 20th century, the artist preferred to explore the mind rather than real world. In Renaissance, we find exploring real world. And then Victorian is also about uh, experiencing the real world. But from real world, that means, real world means one-to-one -one interaction. Real world means writing social things, writing about social things. Which attention of the artist shifts to the mind, human mind. That means uh, 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 literature becomes more psychological in nature. Okay, so like Simon Freud had also come, he told that there uh, are three levels of consciousness, uh, super consciousness, subconscious, unconscious. Okay, in this way, they were telling about the levels of mind and what, how, what makes men think. So they were talking about psychological things. So exploration of mind, inner recesses of mind. This also allowed them to escape from the real world because see, at uh, these are two opposite things happen. At one place, they are exploring mind and trying to understand human mind. At the same time, one escapist type of literature is also coming, where they want to shift their attention from the real world. Because real world is all about wars. So two opposite. I told you, modern literature is not a simple thing. There are so many con uh, contradictions uh, and uh, so many opposites coming together, diversified. Okay. So this also allowed them to escape from the real world, as I said, this mag magic kind of thing, which they uh, found common, uh, difficult to understand. So... This is multi-layered. Then we find emergence of literature of escape, as I said. Publishing industry is flourishing because this is the age of mechanization. Publishers are coming up with number of low price editions. That means as you that day was last day was uh, telling about the velvet uh, covering of the books. Now paperbacks have come. They are uh, cheaper than the uh, hard bound books. So in this way. So people are reading a lot. Education is a common thing now. It is not something privileged. So we find a lot of revolutionary aspects being transmitted and carried to different parts of the world through dissemination of knowledge and books as well. Steam engine has come. People are moving. Uh, as they are moving along with them is moving literature. So we come to know about the life of other culture, other countries. We know that how our culture is different from other. Uh, we are influenced by this cultural thing. For example, here, Britishers, they lived for so many years, 200 years. We were influenced by their culture. And in these 200 years, they were influenced by our culture. So this thing all goes on. So this age continues to be the age of contradictions. Okay. So this is an age of ideological conflicts. Ideologies were formed, Marx or uh, so many thinkers they had come, I am not naming them, they brought their own ideologies, someone talking about socialism, someone talking about communism, someone talking about capitalism. So all these ideologies are coming here and they are of different nature, of, full of contradictions, right? So world is becoming a complex place. And then finally, we see that world has divided into after Second World War, especially. The world divided into capitalist and communist lines. There is a kind of cold war after Second World War. 
it seems that cold war means it seems like in second world war every world basically you know what the second world war did in the second world war so many countries they got independence africa was the african countries were the colonies of british empire some were the colonies of french empire well, not empire we may say yes but france has uh, made colonies everywhere so these countries are getting liberated they are becoming independent nations right but then the countries which were previously colonies of so many empires now they have or they they bring themselves together commonwealth nations uh, uh, this kind of thing is built up right so th th there exists cold war it seems that war has ended but still people are dividing and subdividing so after second world war develops first world nations second world nations because in Third world war they world. had made allies allied countries yes allied nations were there and then finally third world world uh, third world third. third world is the world that were previously colonies of western countries underdeveloped countries uh, yes they remained undeveloped no that is yeah, underdeveloped yeah that uh, they developed and uh, they they were made underdeveloped by these color uh, because they were exploiting all the resources and the minds of the people were also the most important thing is human mind was colonized right so uh, 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 this is what happens that uh, and these first world nations they are capitalist then the communist nations you see russia and china and then uh, uh, these all they came up then there was third world countries so now and this period also witnessed beginning of rebellion against british empire that is why they were getting freedom so there is a growing national sentiment in most of the colonies and they are moving towards decolonization decolonization means freeing them so becoming independent nations okay so colonized decolonized getting rid of colonized uh, because it was in india we can for if we take example of india india was divided into colonizer and colonized right now decolonization means colonizers go back to their home nations and the people they make their own uh, government or own arrangement and they are decolonized right is it clear yes ma'am yes ma'am yes yes ma'am yes ma'am okay now we find many of the countries in africa and asia as i said they are getting free then so there is emergence of commonwealth and post colonial literature post colonial means after colonization uh, after decolonization whatever literature came up that was called post colonial okay so this time was a critical period and a period of crisis for different populations of the world crisis because they were now they had to find their own identity those so sal ka jo british rule tha it is not about just india it's about africa also it was about america also because american countries were also made colonies so the period of crisis of these different uh, 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 population that we have to find our own culture back now our own identity so we find large scale refugee movement also and genocidal wars were happening genocidal wars is the, the biggest example is what hitler was doing in germany you know that yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma the, ma the jews yes the jews were killed jews were yes, killed right and based on the genes they have different genes they have to be killed so this they call it is ethnic cleansing 
such things were also happening. Then, though this did not affect Britain or urban modern economies, uh, the uh, continent of Europe and all that, we did find all intellectually responding to many of these adverse things happening across the world. They were giving responses because they had to do something or other. They, these nations, they had been colonies once upon a time. So they were responding in different ways. E.M. Foster wrote a novel, Passage to India. He was writing about his experience in India. So there were many other writers. So they were giving response. Joseph Conrad, he wrote about uh, Africa. So we find the writers and the thinkers, the statesmen, statesmen means all the political uh, people, the artists and all people who could think of Britain responding to many things which was happening across the nations. There were issues of racism, poverty, unemployment. We were very poor at, at that time when British left. Right. So this emergence of Another power block together identified as third world distant place. Then came Darwin, as I told you, his three these things. This put God in question. Right. Now, this 20th century, uh, the psychological words of Simon Freud. This was very important, as he told different things about the unconscious mind of human beings. Now, many of his theories are challenged in this age because psychology has progressed a lot. Uh, it, it has taken place more, uh, more than 100 years have passed, right? So now modernism is a particular period which could be historically and chronologically situated just in the beginning of 20th century. 20th century, say 1900, say 1930, or 50 years, so 1960, it was called 20th century. Peter Berry is a critic and he has given definition of, long definition of modernism. He says modernism is a name given to the movement which dominated. Just read this definition bit by bit. Okay, is the name of our movement that dominated. Ma'am, the slide is, slide is not visible. It's not visible to you? Yes, ma'am, the ma last slide is, is visible. The publication of Darwin's uh, Wally, that slide is visible. Okay. Now? Ma'am, it is visible, no, ma'am. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. It is yes, visible, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma oh, it, it will take some time. That means it depends on the network. So modernism is a movement which dominated arts and cultures in the first half of the 20th century. First half means 1950. Right? So modernism was that earthquake. Earthquake means radical changes coming in arts which brought down much of the structure of pre-20th century practice. Pre-20th century means Victorian age. Victorian age major music, painting, literature and architecture existed that completely changed in 20th century. And what uh, as earthquake has an epicenter where it starts. Here the earthquake ka jo epicenter tha, it was in Vienna. From Vienna during the period 1892-1910, this movement went, this radical change took place. Then from Vienna it came to France, Germany, Italy and finally in Britain. This art movement. And uh, these art movements, the yes. Ma'am, he now said we are talking Vienna about because... literature, uh, not, uh, yes. He said Vienna because of the French Revolution, no? He said that the... Yeah, that was the major, major thing that was took place. Yes. So, the okay, different art movements that came were Cubism, Dadism, Surrealism. Surrealism because they wanted something out of real, reality. Then Futurism. That means uh, what would happen in future. Some science fiction kind of thing. Then it's aftershocks, 
जब अर्थक्वेक चला जाता है फिर थोड़े थोड़े ट्रेमर्स आते हैं सो इट्स आफ्टर शॉक्स आर स्टिल बींग फेल्ट टूडे एंड मेनी ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर टॉपल्ड है फ्यूडलिज्म ये वो जितनी भी चीज़ें थी जस्ट कॉलोनाइजेशन सब खत्म विदाउट एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ मॉडर्निज्म then it is impossible to understand 20th century culture so this is why modernism should be understood in order to understand the culture of 20th century right yes ma'am is the definition too complicated no ma'am no ma'am so any doubt any discussion that yes i'm tanishka badoria this side yes ma'am were there any influence of uh, churches during this period of modern drama no church is now relegated to it's now a religious thing hmm. we have moved to science and technology has come up so it is basically in uh, in 20th century it is basically about uh, relations between different nations mm. uh, then the change uh, different cultures multiculturalism is coming up okay so multiculturalism is coming up then the thinking is uh, yes ma'am sorry at this side Ma'am, yes. Uh, actually, suddenly, a uh, network was gone. So please explain the theory of Peter Berry. Peter Berry. Peter Berry has basically said that modernism is a kind of an earthquake. That means it brought changes in literature. This changes in art, music. You can switch on your videos now. All of you. So uh, uh, these changes in literature. Uh, come uh, the epicenter of it was vienna okay and uh, from vienna it spread to different other nations and uh, it went to finally england too and then he said that how different movements have come up like deism surrealism futurism so literature basically becomes multi dimensional so many kinds of literature so if you want to understand this uh, 20th century culture then you have to understand what these movements were and what these different art forms were right this is what peter berry says is there any ma'am what is a cold ma'am yes ma'am i'm shobna hai ma'am what is a cold war are they referring to the specific war between us and ussr or what does the cold war mean cold war is when they don't fight but then politically they are not together and yes, they but are ma'am that was specifically other. between america and russia only ussr not russia us and yeah and allied USA. nations and all those were formed right it was a group of nations not exactly two countries okay right? ma'am yeah so is this modern age clear to you so next in next class we will be discussing modern drama and our first unit will be completed right ma'am yes let me speak about an age is also known as shakespearean age yes because uh, for major time shakespeare was the most uh, prominent dramatist and uh, not only dramatist even poet sonnet writer right so it is also known as uh, shakespearean age right is it clear so ma'am ma yes, modern ma age is not complete yes. yet na what is still left to be discussed not modern asking age, i am uh, more for modern age if you want to discuss it will take at least one month to discuss uh, because it is it's so diversified and it is in hmm. so many layers okay hmm. now we have to come to modern drama and when we will be discussing modern drama again this modern age will be discussed in that okay ma'am okay 
and uh, then uh, yes for one lecture it will take for that and then we will be doing a doll's house that is modern drama yes ma'am uh, yeah Ma'am, okay. Shakespeare is included in both Elizabethan and Jacobian period, na? Yes, but still, okay. uh, is uh, Shakespeare is called as a uh, Renaissance writer? Okay, but still, he is known as Renaissance poet, Renaissance dramatist. <laughs> Though his major plays came in Jacobian period too. Right? Okay, ma'am. Okay, then meet you in the next class. Maybe tomorrow itself. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Most welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Most welcome. So young. Super, ma'am.